Hello everybody, Walters954 here. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to use the VLOOKUP function. This goes out to Mex from the Salesforce Exchange Discord. Links down below. If you're not in the Discord, definitely get in here. And we're going to be using a validation rule with this function. And I say validation rule because you can't use the VLOOKUP inside of formula fields. And I'll show you that really quickly here. I created a quick new custom field that is a formula field and if I scroll down through to all the different functions I do not see VLOOKUP. So a lot of you are very familiar with the VLOOKUP function in Excel. It basically goes through a list and returns any values that match uh, based on that particular column and in Salesforce it works very similarly but uh, there are a few limitations that I will touch on in the end. To give you some background in Salesforce and how it works, like I mentioned in the beginning, it has to be on a validation rule. And basically what we're trying to accomplish is when we have a particular zip code, we want to match it to our zip code object, which we have here. Check either the zip code value itself, so this is the name of the record, or the state value, and match that to the account that we have in here, so the state or the zip, depending on which one we want to check. Let's get right into our validation rule. So I already have the validation rule created here. It's called valid zip code, and I've preset in the VLOOKUP function. And we'll take a second here to dissect this VLOOKUP function. So it has three parameters. The first one is the field to return. So this is the field that we want to get in the end to do our check or validation from our custom object. Second is a field that we want to look up on the object. So this is actually always going to be the object name, which is another limitation, but basically saying we want to look through the names for a particular value. And third is the actual value that we want to look for. So if we start actually adding our values into the parameters, the first thing that we'll notice is weird or something that you may have never used before is we'll need to actually use the object type to return the name of that specific value. So we're actually not returning a reference, we're returning an object. And I know that may sound a little scary, but basically what this means is when you're using the VLOOKUP, you have to go into the object type selection and select the actual field that we want to return. In this first case, let's say we wanted to return the state. So we're going to be doing a VLOOKUP from our billing state, looking through all of the zip codes, finding that value, and then doing a check to see if that's the correct one. So now let's go ahead and input the name. We're going to go to object type, zip codes, and this one should be the name of our zip code object. And for the second parameter, it is always going to be the name of your custom object that you're using. Last is the value that we're going to use to do our searching. So this is coming from our actual account object that we have here. So in this one, I'm going to say billing postal code. Now this is great. We have our VLOOKUP and what this is saying is that we're going to take the billing postal code, look through the zip codes object, and if we find one, we are going to return the state. So it kind of reads backwards, but in the end here, all we're doing is returning the state value in here, which doesn't work well for a validation rule because validation rules need to evaluate to true or false. So we need to turn this into a logical expression. And what we'll do is compare our value that we're getting back from our VLOOKUP to the actual billing state, which is what we're returning from our custom object. So we're gonna say that if the billing state does not equal the value that is not returned, then we will throw an error, which is invalid zip code. Let's go ahead and check our syntax. Everything looks good there, hit save. And then let's check this out. So right now we are under Texas. And let's just increment this to see uh, if we have a zip code for this. So what is happening when I press save is the validation rule is gonna run. It's going to look into my zip code object for this particular zip code. And then it's going to 
if it has a zip code, return that specific state for that zip code. So it'll try to match that 75002 zip code to one of the ones in this object, and then it will try to return the state. And then if the state does not match my current state, then it will throw an error. I'm assuming when I'm gonna save this, because I already know that I don't have this zip code in here, it's gonna throw an error. If I copy this one, Four oh four. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And we're still coming up with an error even though my zip code is correct in here. And this is because my state is off. So it's basically checking that my zip code and my state match and then hitting save. So now I'm able to save Florida. Just as another test for you guys. I'm going to type in California, hit save, and now it's saying that, hey, this is off because it knows from looking inside of this zip code object that this should exist for Florida. That's what I have in here. So I'll go ahead and type in Florida again, and we should be golden there. Another quick variation that I can show is changing the value that is returned so we can check different types of values. So let's say that we wanted to look at the zip code value itself from our custom object. So that's the name, this zip code here. I'll just change our object field type to name and then change this to billing postal code. And then it's gonna be doing a validation based on your postal code instead of state. So to run through this one more time, your account billing postal code, once saved, will look through the names of all of the zip codes and then return the actual zip code name. And right now when we look at our zip code, the names are zip codes. And we're doing a comparison to see if the zip codes match. Let me go ahead and save this. And then I'm gonna update this to, I think the Texas one. I think that's it. I'm gonna hit save and we can see that that is wrong. It's saying invalid zip code because I know that that zip code does not exist in my list. If I go back to 34, I think it's 32404, hit save, boom. It's saying that, hey, we're allowed to pick that one, but we can actually change this to Texas because it's not doing a validation on the state. It's only doing a validation on the zip code. And that in a nutshell is how you use the VLOOKUP. There is a couple things that you should review in the tips area down here. One of the major ones is that you cannot use pick lists in this. Another interesting one as well is that you have to use the record name in the fields to look up. So that means that you'll always have to do some sort of matching based on the custom object's name. There's no way of using a custom field to do the matching for uh, whatever additional item that you're looking at. You always have to use the custom field's name to do that validation. If you're wondering how to set up the zip code object, check out my previous video where I went over the creation of this and the data upload of all of these fields. Thanks everyone for watching, I really appreciate it. If this video was helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have ideas or want me to explain something, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.